Welcome back to Pathologic. It's about 9 a.m. on day 11. We've just woken up at Grace's Lodge after being knocked out and having all of our belongings stolen by the asshole guards who were waiting for Andre Stamaton down here. I killed the guards waiting out front, took the rifle, so now I've got a rifle and 20 shots and that is literally all I have, well, aside from this knife. So, before I go trying to track down those people and do some other things, the first thing I want to do is go to the termitary. Because I'm already close to it, so I might as well just do it while I'm here. Let's go see if we can find Barak and speak with Tara. Speak with Tara about her supposed future position as a Earth Mistress. I'm assuming you're good guards and not bad guards, right? Yeah, they're cool. Oh, this person's still here. This is the person you could talk to to do fistfights, right? And gain vials of blood or something like that? Will you fight? <laughs> no thanks, I'm good. They probably even took my money, didn't they? I haven't checked, but I'm assuming so. Oh no! Actually, they didn't take my money. That's actually very strange. Why would they take all of my belongings, but not my money? Okay, um, I know where Taya is. Can I remember where Barak was? Hmm. Well, this is where he was last time. He's missing. That's a very bad sign. Let's go speak with Taya. My right eye is only half closed when I'm tilted. Nothing to say to the future Earth Queen. I was expecting for there to be more here. Well, okay then. Uh, in that case, I'm gonna head out to Andre Stamaton's pub. I'll be right back. I'm not quite at Peter's place, or sorry, I'm not quite at Andre's pub yet, but I am at Peter's place. Let's take a stop by here. Oh, this is the store part. Um, to be honest, I could use some immunity boosting stuff. Then again, it's gonna hurt me. How much health do I have? It's fine. I've got enough health. Take all of that, thank you. Okay. About 75% immunity, nice. I'm assuming there will be no sign of Peter. Oh no, there's Peter. Hey. You saved my brother and me from being shot. But if you truly value my life so much, protect the tower. I'm trying, man. I won't make it if the flower falls down. I should have passed away yesterday. Now I'll be bound to roam this veil of tears, worthless. Powerless. Restless like a ghost. Flower falls down? Is he being poetic, or is that actually just a mistyping of tower? It'd be pretty hard to mistype two letters. F and L. Peter, what's happening to the canes? 
What does your tower have to do with it? Tell me. You know them well, after all. Do you believe in the existence of the immortal soul? That's the second time I've been asked that. I don't. It just so happens that Maria believes in it fervently. Khan fancies my creation, but he only sees optical tricks in it and is reluctant to admit to its other qualities. But Maria... Maria believes that the polyhedron can hold to the glint of a deceased person's soul. The Canes call it memory. So she wants to lodge Simon's soul into the polyhedron. Repeatedly reflected by reflections of reflections, disconnected from the ground, endlessly soaring between the firmament and the void. Yes, the polyhedron was intended for Simon. It will become a shrine for the Canes, a shrine where they'll be able to turn to him for advice to prepare for their future achievements. Again, I have to wonder, do the Canes have the town's best interests at heart? Because once again, it seems like what they're trying to do is protect Simon, protect their family, protect, protect their legacy. Is that for the better of the town, or just for the better of them? What does it mean? A man, in fact, is not the master of his inspiration. Inspiration is sent from above. It just so happened that all these years it has been coming from Simon. And from Nina, of course. I have a feeling that Maria has successfully executed an intricate scheme. Involuntarily, perhaps. But what's done is done. What scheme? An intricate one. You are aware that Victor and Georgie are already dead, right? You are mistaken. They're still alive. The senior Canes are no more. They've spent their whole life force to hold on to the memory of their beloved departed. The memory that has no focus, because of us. Both of them are merely bodies now, inhabited by different souls. Whose souls? Georgie is holding on to Simon, Victor, to his beloved spouse, Nina Cana, who had to be moved away from the focus of the crucible when Simon had left his body. But it's too confined for Simon. This house diminishes him. Peter, you look unusually sober. I wouldn't have been surprised to hear something like this from you yesterday, but now. It's essential to allow yourself no time to think. That's how you get to heaven. So the senior canes have been dead for a while, haven't they? At least ever since that dialogue option appeared that said, Who are you? When I was speaking with Victor. That was no longer Victor. That was Nina Cana. Okay, um, let's speak with the Sabarovs and then go to Andre Stampton's pub and see if we can find some trace of Andre. Yes. Oh, it's been forever since I've spoken with him, but there's still nothing to say. There's gotta be something with Katarina, right? What? No. Okay. Alright, well, Katarina, I think, is supposed to be one of the protected people, right? that uh, Clara needs to stay alive, so at least it's good to see that she's doing fine. Right, to the bub. Oh 
a bandage, and I only have two waters. Oh, somewhere out there, there's a fucking military asshole who has 60 bottles of water on him. Okay, somebody help me, please. Anybody? Please? Is he back? Oh, he's back. What? Hey! You haven't abandoned me, old boy. I wasn't expecting you to come, to be honest. See, I was stupid enough to return here. But you probably know already that the soldiers are at each other's throats. The squads that are loyal to the general are killing the mutineers by the cannon, and the latter are quite displeased with me. The squads that are loyal to the general are killing the mutineers by the cannon. Okay, so he's he's actually realized that they're mutineers. And he's actually actively killing them. Good. Tell me what happened. Start from the beginning. So, yesterday I came to my brother to sit by his side, as I was planning to. And there were these war mongols there. When I saw them, I knew our cake was dough. I had to- wait, 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 back up, stop, stop, stop the presses. I knew our cake was dough. You mean batter? If you're making a cake out of dough, something's wrong. Cake should be made out of batter. The dough would be way too thick. Unless you're making some sort of weird, like, bread cake. Anyway, okay. I had them removed from my brother's place and ran off looking for him. I kept searching all night. But he was nowhere to be seen. I even went to the general, and he told me there's a mutiny. So it was he who told you about the mutineers? I was there when he himself was informed about them. That is what saved me. I rushed to the cannon, started asking questions about an executed architect. They said they've arrested a lot of rabble to execute at dawn, and then they offered special treatment to me. I barely, I barely escaped with a whole skin. I see? I'm still confused. Was I supposed to be saving Andre Stamaton? Or Peter Stamaton? Because, like, everything about the quest said that I was trying to save Andre Stamaton, but Andre is saying that he, he rushed to the cannon and started asking questions about an executed architect, a.k.a. his brother, Peter Stamaton. I mean, I know that, like... There was confusion over who was responsible for what. The military people thought it was... Who did the military people suspect at first? I don't know, they suspected the wrong person or something like that. But, regardless, this is still very, very confusing. I don't understand what's going on with this confusion between Andre Stamaton and Peter Stamaton. But I guess it doesn't actually matter. They're both here and they're both fine. I see. And then I rush to the pub to find reinforcements and assault the cannon. That's where it gets stupid. It seems that I've raised so much noise by the cannon that they've made special inquiries about me. They've sent a squad to the den. Okay, I know what happened next. How did you manage to break free? My faithful comrades have won me back. On our way here, they told me that Peter came home and was sleeping like a log. I made sure it's true, and then I came back here to count my losses. I see. There's also a rumor that Andre Stamaton, the... Uh... There's also a rumor that Andre Stamaton, the architect that had murdered every soldier in his studio yesterday and set fire to a stone stairway later, was just executed by the mutineers. That's when the assault began. What is that supposed to mean? That was me. So I am you. The furnace of this catastrophe has molded me, my brother, and you into a single person. The fire of war has molded us into a threefold bullet. It's natural. We are one. The three sides of a single process. Come to the capital with us. Wait a minute. I think I've heard that already somewhere. Deja vu. Really? Well, it's no wonder another smart person has pointed out the obvious to you. 
I don't remember who said that already. Anyway, wait, it's too early to celebrate yet. Show me the design of the tower's foundation. So I've just been given the designs. A supplement to the polyhedron blueprints. They describe the terrible foundation which allows the tower to stand, defying the laws of physics How's and geometry. Any news on him? The supplement also contains all the relevant calculations. That's what I was supposed to find, right? Because... Uh, the Inquisitor thought that if I could find the reason it's able to defy gravity, that I would find the source of the infection. For some reason she believed that. I've unearthed the basis of the miracle. In order to support the tower, the spire was drilled precariously deep into the earth. The consequences of this are most dire. I should take the designs to the Inquisitor. Wait. Drilled precariously deep into the earth. Was the Inquisitor right? There's nothing to talk about. Was the Inquisitor right? The polyhedron has been drilled so deep into the earth, it's cracked through... It's cracked through that, that layer that nobody's been able to get through, right? Because like, uh, like little Vlad said, and I think even maybe Barack himself said, um, I don't quite remember, little Vlad and or Barack mentioned taking samples of Earth and digging deep down and just coming across this layer that they couldn't get through, right? Nobody had been able to go particularly deep. And then everything down to that point was clean, right? But this, this thing, this polyhedron goes deeper, deeper and deeper and deeper. It's the only thing that's actually been able to go that deep. And in doing so, it's... Unleash the plague? It certainly is suspicious. It certainly is plausible. Just how deep does it go? To support all that? It would have to be drilled, what? Miles deep or something? And even then, to have all the weight supported by such a tiny... little dot at the bottom, the material it's made out of would have to be extraordinarily strong. Implausibly strong. So it doesn't, it doesn't exactly explain everything. But... At least we know how it's defying gravity. Or in this case, not really defying gravity. It's just a needle. It's a needle going deep into the skin of... This. So deep that it's hitting... What? Something bad. Something bad in the body of this town. The body of this earth. Okay, um... So, to the Inquisitor, huh? I should probably speak with Block along the way, and also, I do really, really want the Panaceas. So I feel like I should go back to the cannon and see if I could find the fighting? Maybe the... Maybe I can help in the fight, or perhaps everybody will already have been killed and I can loot the bodies. Because I need that panacea. Well, first things first, let's go speak with Block. He must have something to say about all this, right? So, 
there's a mutiny. We thinned out the ranks of marauders, but now they've got new blood. Listen, your soldiers opened fire at me. I am already aware of that. You were absolutely in the right. I thank you. Excuse me? Enough. This cannot go on any longer. My units are not following orders. Yesterday, a quarter of them succumbed to the disease. Today, I lost a half more. The only good thing is that the plague mows the mutineers down faster than it does the loyal soldiers. Fitting spoils of their rebellion. What units are these? The 15th Company. The Flamethrower Corps. The 42nd Infantry Battalion. Partially, the new raw troops. Transferred under me on a railway hall, specifically for this damned mission. Do they have insignia or other distinctive features? Who needs insignia? If the soldier's off his post, he's a criminal. Criminals are subject to a quick trial and immediate punishment. This is absolutely obvious. Now is not the time to take a soft line. What should I do if I see a soldier off the post? Kill them on the spot. Offer resistance. Report to me. Although I'm already on it. If only I had enough forces left, the mutineers and traitors would have already been exterminated publicly. Just like at the Karstoff Fords. Fine. I'll keep it in mind. Where are the orderlies? Those... Anything to say to you, Clara? I'll find nope. you. Okay, uh, supposed to deliver the plans to the Inquisitor. Should I do that before going down and seeing if I can, seeing if I can find the soldiers that knocked me out? Uh, I am kind of close to her, so you know what? I will. I'm finding these things exceptionally hard to avoid. They, like, rebound, and then they come towards you again. Yeah, and then they always hit me, even though it looks like I'm out of range. I don't know if they got better, or if I just got worse at dodging them, because I used to be pretty good. Ah, oh, well. It's not that big of a deal. My infection's still really low. Thanks to that nice flamethrower guy who burned off all my skin. See if anything's changed here. No, nothing's changed. And what if I speak with the Canes again? Let's go talk with Victor, aka Nina. Yes? Everything will be decided tomorrow. The black muzzles of the cannons ready to begin the bombardment. So this is what the dark void of death looks like. So the true nothingness, unlike true magic, can indeed be firmly grasped. With a steel ring, and one of a not particularly large caliber at that. Someone's tried to assure me recently that such things cannot be grasped. Okay, they're not going to have anything to say. They've grown up and grown tired of me. By the way, Bachelor, have you by any chance heard of the outrageous event that happened yesterday? In the bone steak lot? In the bone steak lot. 
Yes, someone tried to incite a riot. The military have exterminated an unarmed mob. A perfectly healthy mob. This is the event I'm talking about. And I know for sure who was behind it. Because I know who turned out to be guilty of this horrible crime. Me. I was the one they framed. So she thinks she was framed for being the one behind starting the riots. No, I don't think you were framed. I think you did it. I think we understand each other full well, Inquisitor. Everyone was doing their job. Everyone only knew what they were supposed to know. Supposed to, by you. You? No. You only provided the military with the information. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who have orchestrated this... Mysteria. Undoubtedly, it was Maria. And this Mark, the impresario of the local theater, has given her a cue as to how. No, it wasn't. It definitely was not Mark. I spoke with him. This sort of thing is beneath him. Yesterday she was unconscious all day long. She is a witch, the dark mistress. Have you already heard about Nina and Victoria? Ask around. Then you'll see who Maria strives to be. She will turn into a warlock queen and make the town bend before her tyranny. Like Nina before her. Only even more frightening. It can be proven. Tell me about Nina. Nina was the embodiment of absolute evil. The charming, intoxicating beautiful evil. The evil that can drive you mad. The graceful and elegant evil that is fast to capture anyone in its web. Even those who stand up to evil till the very last. I have a hard time believing that she would be that evil. The Canes do not seem evil. They seem virtuous. They seem... Well... They seem like a good family. I wouldn't exactly say I trust them, but... I certainly don't believe Nina was pure evil. Are you trying to say you're painting Maria's portrait? Considering they're supposedly alike. I'm content with the accounts of two extremely reliable prosecutors. They know for sure that the yesterday's pictogram in the lot was created by Maria. The first is a man that has been selflessly in love with Maria for a long time now, and has recently come to know some of her secret doings. Who is it? Ogimsky's son. The second is Maria's younger brother, little Kaspar, or Kaspar, I guess, who also knows Maria's immediate plans better than anyone else. He is so terrified of them that he's ready to run to the ends of the earth. Hmm. This is interesting. By the way, if you want to talk to this Casper boy, or Caspar, I'm just going to call him Casper, this Casper boy, please hand this panacea over to him. This file was brought to me by Barack yesterday. It's reliable. The boy will understand. Actually, after talking to him, so will you. Oh, giving me a panacea only to give it up. Oh, that makes me so sad. Alright, I'll see you to it. It's a bee in my bonnet, too. More and more side quests. Aglaia does not trust the canes. She wants to use the little con to get to Maria, and has asked me to give the panacea to him in exchange for some information that may be used to incriminate his sister. I don't want to do a damn thing that Aglaia wants me to do. But I suppose there's no harm in simply asking for information, right? Alright, I'll do it.
Okay, so this thing is drilled into the earth, huh? Where? Like, the staircase? Because the staircase is the only part of the structure that's actually touching the ground. Hmm. It seems like this is the thing that I would expect to be piercing the earth like a needle, but it's not touching the ground, so surely it can't be. I have a message from the Inquisitor to Khan. We'll meet her power with our own demands. I am the last of the kinds who is willing to take care of the real world now. You came on her behalf, I know. What is there for us to talk about then? Tell me, Gasper, what happened to Maria? You should know that better than me. I'm not going to help you with this. You hold a grudge against your sister. Why? Sister forces us out from here. Oh. When she goes to put Simon's soul inside of the polyhedron, there won't be room for the children as well. It's either the children, or Simon, not both. Hmm... It was she who put down the bull in the bone steak lot yesterday, wasn't it? No. But she's involved into many other things. For example, it was she who got rid of Ava. How's that for news, huh? She wanted to have you all for herself. I could tell you a lot about my sister, but I don't want to flaunt the dirty linen. How do you know about Ava? Ask my sister. She knows how to do these things. She won't lie to you. She'll tell the truth. So no Cain has anything to do with what happened in the lot? No. None of us did that. I'd be glad if there were charges. Father and uncle are at the death's door, and I do not want to live under my sister. What can I do to find the guilty party, then? Why are you asking me? Bulls are Olginsky's domain. If the big one has resigned, ask the young one. He knows a lot about my sister, too. Okay, speak with little Vlad. He's the one that's in love with Maria, right? Take the panacea. This is for you. I won't. I have a thousand, a thousand fellows here. Either all of us get it, or none of us does. Take it. Or give it to Olgimsky. He'll tell you all about sister. What is this option saying? I'll tell the Inquisitor that you, by any stretch of the imagination, cannot acknowledge the complicity of your relatives to the lot situation, against your personal preferences. Is that correct? That's a very complicated sentence. But I think it's saying basically that... 
there's no way the Canes had anything to do with the bone steak lot thing. That whole situation, because Khan says that they have nothing to do with it, and if anything, Khan would love to lie and say that they do, because he wants them arrested. Okay, let's go with that. It is. No, no one will claim that I'm only saying that to protect my family. Yes, I've already realized what your position is. Indeed. Maria is going to take over your home. And thus... Many of the children will get sick and die. Okay. So go to little Vlad. Is that what's happened in my quest? Khan says he would have gladly provided information that would have helped to compromise his sister. The problem is, he doesn't have any such information. Quite convincing. It seems Vlad the Younger is the only witness left. Let's see if we can report the situation to Aglaya. They've grown up and grown tired of me. Mm, doesn't seem like it, but it looks like I can talk with her about other things. Well, do have a look. I've got the blueprints of the Foundation. Here it is. Take a look. So the miraculous machine turned out to be a lever pumping poisonous organic matter from below the ground. How symbolic. There is a certain familiar logic to it. The general logic of the world structure. Don't tell me you're surprised, Bachelor. Why are you calling it a lever? So the local diggers, drillers, and engineers find sophisticated ways to screw a longest stem into the ground under Andre Stamaton's guidance. The polyhedral egg lies upon this stem as though it was a spring. Reminds you of a lever, doesn't it? Hmm. But if the builders stirred the underground deposits when they installed the foundation, why has the outbreak only happened now? because of the soil. I think this clot used to be a pit where the steppe people would bury the remains of slaughtered bulls. There are facts to support this. I suspect it was situated above the cramps point. The pressure was gradually increasing. Perhaps the pintle was shifting. And when it got to the clot, So you're saying... You're saying that the stem piercing the ground eventually unearthed this pit just full of dead bulls. And that the pestilence was just breeding in there? Yes, sounds plausible. We have found the source. I congratulate you on the victory, Daniel. Tomorrow is the last, and the hardest day. We have, but it's all very sudden. Somehow I can't shake the feeling you knew beforehand. I see you at the meeting at the headquarters tomorrow. I'll come. Hmm. Far too simple. I don't like this. I don't like Aglaia. Oh, that's the end of today's quest. The very soil on which the town is built is seeping with poison. The construction of the tower had uncovered something that was laying in wait. The cause of the outbreak is clear now. It is a systematic certainty. Does this mean, however, that we must destroy the tower? This dying town is already beyond salvation. But the polyhedron... This epitome of human aspiration may be saved. May be saved. Indeed, that's what they said in the play, that it can be saved. But only with a sacrifice. Yes. Hmm. Is there anything more to talk about? Why are they playing me up? There's a mutiny. Two companies have gone rogue. They're trying to get to the long-range weapons now. I know that already. This is really too much. 
Block is hunting them and punishing them mercilessly. Yes, he's good at that. The worst is the fact that Descent is shortening our time frame. And it's already short. We need to be swift. Any minute now, Block will realize that every hour of delay is biting off a quarter of his forces. We'll do everything we need to by tomorrow. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to go speak with little Vlad about the whole situation with Maria. Because he knows more. He knows more about Maria, and he knows more about the bull.